Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear us well here on our first of four webinars in this series. Um, my name is Lindsay Wallace. I'm the Director of Strategic Projects and Design Services at Main Street America. I'm just going to start us off with a few housekeeping notes. So just, uh, just keep bear with us for just a sec as we go through these. Um, and as I go through these notes, we have a question for you as attendees um, to answer in, in a couple of words here in the questions box in your control panel there on the right where it says questions. You can type in questions there. Um, we're wondering, what is your role in your community and where are you located? So if you could do that as I'm going through these quick uh, housekeeping notes, we would really appreciate it. So kicking things off, so first of all, this is a four-part webinar series that will run Tuesdays uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. Central Time, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time from today, October 29th to November 19th, so four parts there. Um, this series is designed as a master class, meaning that each session is going to build on the previous one, so we really encourage you to attend all four. We've structured this to be heavily interactive. So while we want and intend to share the contact with, content with you, we also want you to be active contributors to the process because we know you as attendees, as practitioners in this field, you have a wealth of experience, knowledge, and stories that will really enrich everyone's experience in, in these webinars. Um, so again, you know, we have these four. We encourage you all to attend each session, each session in order and complete the weekly assignments, which we'll talk about as we go through. For all of you that are watching this um, recorded, you can do the assignments as well. They're not required, but you'll see them on our website. And we'll give you all those details as we go through. So each session is going to be recorded, and you can ask, access these recordings either through your GoToWebinar registration. If you're attending live, you can go back through that registration link and get the recording that way or it will also be on a YouTube channel link that will be on the Transportation Toolkit homepage, which you'll see over and over again as uh, we progress through this introduction webinar. Um, there is a chat box in that control panel for you to type in questions. So there's a chat and a questions box. We prefer you to put them in the questions box so we have them all in one spot. Um, we will have time for Q&A at the end of the hour, and then I'll read the questions aloud once we get to that part. So feel free to type in during the presentation, but we won't get to them until the end. So thanks for those in advance. We are expecting about 500 people on the webinar, or we had 500 people register. So everyone but the speakers have been muted. If you could also mute your phones just in case there's a flub with GoToWebinar where audio comes through, we'd really appreciate it if you could also mute yourselves. And again, with the Q&A, we'll only be uh, looking at the questions box. We're not going to turn on the audio just simply because of the uh, the number of people attending. But thank you all for your interest. We are offering AIA and AICP credits through this course. If you are seeking AIA credits for the webinar series, AIA does require that we get your name and your uh, AIA number. So if you do have those, the, this uh, URL is up on the screen. You could fill that survey out. We'll be sending it out after the webinar as well. So if you don't do it right now, don't worry about it. You'll see this URL again for you to type in. AIC pre credits are also available, but that will be uh, via self-report. So that's some housekeeping for you there, and uh, we're happy to offer those credits. We do want you to attend all four, even if you don't attend all four live, um, and you can watch them via the recordings to, to get those credits. So all of that said, it's prep. I am now pleased to hand over the opening of this first webinar to Laura Torchio. Laura, take it away. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Laura Torchio. I'm Deputy Director of Transportation at Project for Public Spaces, and I've been working with the organization for a little over three years. Um, and I've worked on many very exciting projects, but this one uh, really has brought me a lot of great joy. So today, um, my team and I are very excited to welcome you to kick off the first in our series of webinars that will expand the Navigating Main Streets as Places People First Transportation Toolkit. It's a kit of streets and transportation resources and tools 
that was produced in partnership by Main Street America and Project for Public Spaces. Okay, we're having a little glitch in the advancement of the slides, but we're going to get that fixed in a second. So we would like to thank each of you for the interest you have already expressed in this toolkit and for your eagerness to participate in this four-part webinar series. We would also like to offer our deepest appreciation to the Ann T. and Robert M. Bass Foundation, whose generous support has made today and this toolkit possible. Before we begin, I'd like to share a little bit about who we are. Okay, so great public spaces strengthen communities. At Project for Public Spaces, we bring great public spaces to life by planning and designing them with the people who use them every day. We envision a world where all people shape public spaces that foster civic life, belonging, and well-being in their communities. And we do that through a process called placemaking. The National Main Street Center leads a national network and a movement committed to strengthening communities through preservation-based economic development in older historic downtowns and neighborhood commercial districts. The National Main Street Center believes streets are for everyone. At the core of their approach to revitalization is a commitment to creating places of shared prosperity, equal access to opportunity, and inclusive engagement. Our organizations also have a long history of working together. In 2016, we partnered together in an effort called Cultivating Place, where we worked um, in 10 different states. Um, and we conducted convenings both on rural placemaking and health in Washington, D.C. and Denver. Um, we also partner in conjunction with the Brookings Institution under the Anti and Robert M. Bass Center for transformative placemaking. And now we're working together on this very toolkit. We have partnered for so long and worked so well together because our organizations have aligned approaches. Both the Main Street approach and the placemaking process emphasize understanding of community needs before assuming solutions, prioritize community collaboration, adapt to the uniqueness of communities, and value incremental implementation and reevaluating approaches. Because our organizations share these similar values and have come to recognize the challenges and immense potential of streets and their transportation, we decided to come together again to bring you this People First Transportation Toolkit for Main Street. So today we are very happy to share further details about how this toolkit came to be and how we envision you and your communities using its contents. We shall share the toolkit <coughs> We will share the toolkit's origin story, provide a full introduction to the contents of this multi-part kit, share our hopes of how this toolkit will help communities to talk together, and then allow for some question and answer time at the end. Presenting these items today will be my team members, Lizzie Wallace, whose voice you've already heard, and my Project for Public Spaces colleague, Shaley Zog. These two speakers will be your toolkit translators, and I hope you enjoy hearing more from them. Take it away, Shaley. Thank you, Laura. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, as Laura mentioned, I'm Shaley Zog, and I'll be the next voice you are hearing. Um, I'm an associate at Project for Public Spaces, and today I'm very excited that you are all online with us to hear more about the toolkit we have so lovingly prepared over this past year. To begin, I'd like to share with you some aspects of how this toolkit came about. In essence, the story of the toolkit's creation and why we wanted to bring it to life. The first why, why streets? Perhaps the most obvious reasoning for why we wanted to focus a guide on streets and transportation is because streets is in the name. Main streets are streets and their surrounding community is made up of many more streets that all create the physical connections for communities to come together and for the central places of social and economic activity. And even if Main Street isn't the official name of your commercial corridor or central hub, the street itself really is an important factor in the makeup of your city or town. In fact, streets make up the greatest majority of publicly designated space in our cities. Many times that average can reach 80% of the public space in a city. 
So that makes them so fundamental as the backbone to our communities. And yet for so long, we hadn't <laughs> really seen them as the actual public space. Why? Because for so much of the past century, the private automobile has been the aspirational transportation choice, which meant that over time, the status quo for street space came to favor the needs of cars. Coming to see that the street as a space for cars meant losing sight for streets as spaces for the full range of public participants and the full range of transportation modes. Like that quote you can see at the bottom of the slide, uh, Dan Burden, a top walkability expert, has pointed out, we have been building streets as a means of getting transportation through communities as efficiently as possible. But there can be such power in reimagining the status quo with a new goal of building communities out of the process of creating great streets together and through the connectivity that transportation systems can provide. And that helps explain why we feel felt so we should focus on transportation too. Just as important as getting people to stay on streets is the necessary need to allow people to still get from place to place through a variety of mobility options. So as partners, both Project for Public Spaces and Main Street America acknowledged that these basic reasonings for why streets and why transportation and thought that a toolkit could be supporting these things and the communities they impact could be useful for both of our respective networks. And this is especially because many Main Street communities and commercial districts have had a design goal for their streets to get vehicles through the district as efficiently and quickly as possible. Sometimes that's been in order to increase access to their shops and services. Often though, the thought was that wider, straighter, Sometimes speedier roads would accomplish these goals, but more often than not, that just created an opposite induced demand that led to further use of cars and less safe conditions for people on foot or bicycle to access those shops and services. The other reason we thought Main Street communities in particular would appreciate a toolkit of resources and support was that many Main Street districts in America are actually located on busy, dangerous state highways a designation which does make it really hard and tricky to navigate both the actual street and the process by which we can begin any course of change for these roadways. Another thing we have often heard from Main Street leaders and various community champions is that they just don't see how they can be a part of this process because designing streets and regulating traffic does take special skill and because there are so many factors that surround street and transportation changes. Many people find it hard to see where they fit into this process and find it hard to know how they can start the conversations with the various stakeholders in their community. So we built this a toolkit around all of these dilemmas, recognizing that navigating transportation and streets work is so very, very tricky and includes a very multi-stakeholder -pro process that will benefit from translations and tools that can help make navigating the processes, holding the conversation, and building the necessary partnerships more manageable. To understand the story of our toolkit, it is also important to know that all of these decoding tools, conversation tips, and commentary for the chapters and pieces of the kit have been rooted in this philosophy of seeing streets as places for people first. Streets as places is a concept that Project for Public Spaces has long valued and is shared by our partners and networks. It is a concept that challenges everyone to see streets in their entirety, to see the full colorful potential. Oh. <laughs> Uh, to see the full colorful potential of main streets. As I mentioned previously when discussing why streets, let's not just see our street space as the place that favors cars and simply transports people and goods, but also see them for all, them as the fundamental public spaces where life unfolds, where economic value is captured, where people can stop and stay a while, in addition to where movement of all types is allowed to happen. Seeing a street as a place for people can mean seeing it as a system that goes beyond the pavement and includes all sorts of street 
landscape elements. That can be the street furniture, the storefronts, the sidewalks and pathways, the amenities of many stores, sorts that can cater to all. It's not just the roadway that makes the street. Seeing a street as a place for people can also mean seeing all of the different activities that happen within the street system beyond just driving. The street includes shopping, playing, the conversations, and the many other types of activities that bring this place to life. And yes, seeing a street as a place for people also means seeing it as a place for movement. The street can be a place for many sorts of transportation modes that make sense for your particular communities. Then beyond creating the street as a place itself, Streets as Places is a philosophy for positioning communities as the owners and creators for their streets, putting the great people of Main Street communities and districts first in the thought process and the action process. All of this anchored us when we were preparing the toolkit and it was an overarching why behind the why we thought a toolkit like this might be necessary and helpful. And I do want to mention that we recognize that Main Streets are already great streets as places and have the great underpinnings for becoming those lovable streets. Many of your communities probably already have the rich histories, unique street elements, fun events and activities, and engaged great people. So we'd love to hear what you might think already makes your streets feel like places for people. So we have a quick little activity to engage you all. Okay, I'm switching the screen, Shaylee, it's coming to you. Perfect, show my screen. Okay, so if you aren't familiar with Mentimeter, this is just a place where we can create a fun little word cloud that captures the what makes your streets already feel like places. So if you will go ahead, um, grab your phone or pull up a different tab or browser um, and go to this uh, website www.menti.com and this is where you will then enter a code uh, that which is 663539 to add your comments. Um, if you aren't able to uh, pull this up on a separate browser feel free to also add this in that question box where you might be adding things as we are going along. Um, we'd love to capture everyone's answers regardless of if they're able to add. Um, but yes, yeah, you'll start seeing people add uh, to the screen and uh, if people repeat the same thing, the, the words will become bigger. Um, but we're asking what makes your streets feel like places for people? Share some examples or feelings that express your answer. Are you already proud of a bike lane your community has put in? A small business doing great things? Uh, does your street host a parade every year? Um, are there dedicated cleanup crews that make your street consistently beautiful? Uh, share anything that you can imagine that makes you feel attached to your streets with places and that makes you feel like your streets put people first. I love seeing all of the ones come across. Uh, I see holiday decorations, trees. I love that the people, the people do really make the street as a place. Um, So great, uh, events, flowers, elderly, activity, cafes, festivals. Oh, this is really great. I love the engagement. Um, I'll give you some more moments to fill out some answers. And then we will, uh, we'd love to share this after also on social media so you can see. And I think that the link will also be available for, um, after this. So if you want to keep going back and adding, feel free. Uh, great, Shayla. Just tell me when you're ready to switch back. Yeah, just let me know. This yep. is great. Uh, this is great. So uh, thank you everyone who shared. Again, I think you can still access this beyond the webinar for a little bit um, and we'll collect that and share some more. So, Lindsay, if you'd like to switch back. Sure thing. Um, it's really wonderful to know that people are already recognizing the things that make their streets feel like places. And I hope that helps you to start thinking about the assets that your communities already have. 
that will really be the support system for future goals of reimagining your street. So thank you all. As a final piece of the toolkit story, I wanted to share how all of this language and content has shaped how we wrote and organized the full toolkit around three core chapters. So the first chapter is called Transportation Matters for Main Street which is meant to express those multiple answers for why Main Streets as places for people matters, for the quality of life of people and the liveliness of the community as a whole. So it helps you, this chapter is really aimed at helping you navigate the whys of why Streets as places matter. Then the second chapter is called Nuts and Bolts of People for Streets. And this chapter shares what is the part of the process for holistically designing, planning, operating, and managing streets and transportation with a people first mentality. Basically, it is some translations of what you might need to know in order to actively participate in transportation conversations with your community and have some sample strategies that you might find helpful and be able to adapt and create your own unique streets as places. And then the third chapter is building a better street together. This chapter brings the previous two together by expressing how you can utilize all of the information, all of the potential strategies, and then actively communicate and work with each other to achieve the positive outcomes that your main street communities desire. These three chapters orient how we built out the toolkit and how we built out the subsequent webinars and also the online resource library and so now I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay to further go into a deep dive of explaining the toolkit and what's specifically inside, how you can access it. So take it over, Lindsay. Thank you, Shaylee. And thank you especially for handling that word cloud piece. Um, that was really, really cool. And I am a little less tech savvy than Shaylee, and so she bravely managed that for us, and it was awesome. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to do a quick dive into the full toolkit. So Shaylee did a really great job in framing, you know, why we went for this, why we thought it was a good fit for our networks. So I'm just going to talk about some of the nuts and bolts so that you understand what's in it, how you can access it, and give you a sneak peek of some of the features. So. Um, if you've already accessed this toolkit, you already know that it's multi-part. I know from the inquiries that we've gotten that some, some folks on the webinar today don't know that we actually have a lot of other pieces to this. So, surprise, hopefully that's exciting. Um, so, we have a digital handbook, an online resource library, and this masterclass webinar series that you're a part of right now. And we wanted to do a multi-part toolkit for several reasons. We really wanted people to have multiple ways to engage with the information. Um, we wanted interactive ways for other experts and practitioners and stakeholders to engage and share because we know transportation, community development, economic development are really big fields and we love that and we wanted to make sure that this was an interactive uh, opportunity for us with our networks and our colleagues. Um, and we also wanted to offer our collaborative perspective on this, you know, focusing on streets and commercial districts as a way to connect other, other themes that affect our lives and affect our livelihoods living in these districts. So who is it for? I mean, the short answer is everybody, um, but we have a few listed out here, you know, Main Street and commercial district leaders. So we at Main Street America work specifically in commercial district revitalization and economic development in commercial districts. So that's most of our network comes from that, but we know that streets are incredibly important uh, and affect a lot of different people working out there. So we really wanted this toolkit to be for trans transportation professionals. We wanted it to be for community advocates and stakeholders, local and state officials, everybody who has a role to play in creating great streets. We wanted to make sure this toolkit was for everybody, not pitting anybody against each other, but creating an opportunity to, to build some conversations and relationships. So first off, the handbook. This is the centerpiece of the toolkit. It's a little over 80 pages. It's a big, a big document, but we love it and we're so excited to share it with you. Um, we collaborated in the production of this, of course, and we had five advisors who reviewed it on the whole, uh, practitioners both within our organizations and outside, and then we had also additional section advisors that reviewed 
the research and the content to make sure we are capturing the latest and greatest uh, in these in these topics. To access this, so if you haven't seen it yet, currently it's on um, the home pages of both our organization, so MainStreet.org. It's the hero image, as you see on the arrows there on the left. It's also one of the hero images on PPS.org, so their home page as well. It will link to this um, home page you see here on the right. That's kind of our main home page that will live everlasting, uh, hopefully. Uh, the MainStreet.org forward slash navigating Main Street. You can access that from PPS's website. You can access that from ours. So we tried to make it easy to get it uh, to get it everywhere. Download the full publication. You go to that home page. It's that top button there where the arrows, the orange arrows pointing to that blue button. You can download that full publication. You'll get the full PDF. It's free for everybody. So feel free to share it uh, far and wide. We'd appreciate it. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that everybody has access and is able to download it. You'll see our con contact information at the end of the presentation. So if you have any trouble, you can reach out to us to send it to you directly. So what's inside? I mean, Jaylee uh, teed this up really well, and I'm not going to go uh, too deep into all of this because we want you to actually download the toolkit, and the rest of the webinar series will get into detail on some of these topics. But essentially, we've, we've organized this toolkit into three chapters. So the first chapter, you know, looks at truth as places as the overall framework. It's a really wonderful philosophy and concept that Project for Public Spaces has built out over the years that's truly um, just very effective and very uh, connective in the way we think about our places. And we, in this first chapter, we look, uh, look at issues around transportation and great streets around six themes. So we dive into the cost of auto-oriented auto streets and benefits of people-first streets through six themes, including equity, safety, health, economic vitality, environmental sustainability, and community. So there's a lot of research, a lot of pieces that we pointed to in that first chapter to really look at those costs and benefits. Uh, in chapter two, it's more like a nuts and bolts here, looking at the planning and infrastructure policies associated with and examples of programming to help facilitate best practices in streetscape design and pedestrian networks, in managing traffic, in smart parking policy, and then in funding some of these projects. And then chapter three, which is really, chapter two and chapter three are really two parts of a greater whole here. So think about them as, as being connected and sort of interchangeable in terms of the order. Um, but chapter three is the most aimed at implementing the work. So looking at background research and street evaluation tools, stakeholder ident identification and engagement, which we know is crucial to any of the work we're doing, but particularly around streets. And then, of course, building out a vision, a, a shared vision alignment and implementation. Um, so getting back to that point about Chapter 2 and Chapter 3, we were really cognizant of making sure that readers understood that you couldn't just implement a policy or best practice from Chapter 2 without going through the steps of Chapter 3. Those steps emphasize the need for research, the need for assessment, community engagement, and creating a shared vision. So we wouldn't want you to take away going into Chapter 2 and seeing a cool idea and being like, great. We're going for it without doing the steps that you see in chapter three. So we're really cognizant of those pieces going together. We wanted to pass that along to you. Another example here of what's inside, we wanted this handbook to be really tool heavy so that you could take away some of the pieces inside to take out to have meetings with other stakeholders, meetings with other practitioners. So you'll see a few of these tools in there. This is one example of our stakeholder engagement tips and strategies where what you're seeing here is we identify groups of stakeholders like Main Street leaders, which you see here, and point out who they are, what their jobs in the community might be, what concerns, um, what their concerns could be in association with streetscapes and great street projects, how they can help make great street projects happen, and you know, what their role could be. So um, you see there on the right some tips on how to build the partnership, how to uh, take some action steps to build out those relationships. Just one example of one tool in the toolkit, some of the others, we include some suggestions for research points, um, a sample Im implementation plan worksheet. There are a bunch more, but you'll have to download the handbook to see the others. But just another thing we were trying to be cognizant of making this 
easily implementable and actionable because we know that's often missing in the resources that we get our hands on in the field. The second piece is the online resource library. So this is where we took the research, the resources, reports, links, tools, et cetera, and put them in a format where anybody can access them more easily than in the endnotes in the handbook. So we have endnotes in the handbook that direct to these different research points, but the online resource library is another way to see all of this research and access it easily. The online resource library is that same URL we talked about, that mainstreet.org forward slash navigating main streets. It's organized by chapters and sections, so it should be directly applicable or directly connected to how you're reading the handbook. You can go here and find things kind of organized in the same way. It's meant to be dynamic, which means that we can update this continually. It's a live website, and we really we seek contributions from the field. So we have this populated with the research that we've undertaken in creating this handbook, but we want it to grow. So if you do have a resource or a link that you'd like to feature in this, you know, you can contact us directly. You'll see our contacts at the end. Uh, you can also send an email to mainstreet at savingplaces.org, um, and we'll make sure to post up any, any link or resource you think would, would fit well in this uh, online resource library. So to access it, as I mentioned, it's www.mainstreet.org <laughs> forward slash navigating main streets. You'll see here with arrows that we've organized it by chapters. Uh, we've also organized it by themes. So, you know, when I mentioned chapter one, the themes that we have things organized by, we have also created tiles that you can go to directly if you're really interested in expanding uh, understanding of the equity implications of, um, you know, people first streets. You can go straight to that tile and look into that. So we've organized it a couple different ways. One other thing that I want to point out, if you look on the left there, that bottom arrow points to transportation tools. So my point about making this handbook really tool heavy, if you wanted to just access the pieces that you can take out into the field, print out a separate PDF, if you go to that transportation tool link, that really just has the PDF pulled out of the handbook that you could take and run, print off just as, as individual PDFs, rather than um, trying to navigate through the handbook to print them out. We've made it easy for you in these simple pull out PDFs. So what's inside here, again, we have these resources organized by chapter. I use chapter three here as an example. You'll see the subsections. So we've got chapter three, the subsections we talked about, about building knowledge, partnerships, building a plan. Those are the three tiles you go to. If you click on one of those, it'll take you to the resources associated with that section. Pretty simple, hopefully simple navigation, but you see kind of the flow with that. Um, the other piece here, just highlighting again what that uh, transportation tool pullout page looks like. That's how we've organized that one. Again, those are separate PDFs that you can print out at your, at your leisure. And then the third piece, of course, is the webinar series. You are here. Welcome. Um, we wanted to do a webinar series as a part of this toolkit as an opportunity to connect directly with you and with our network to present these pieces, to kind of talk about what's in the handbook, what's in the ORL, the online resource library. Uh, we also wanted to create it as a series so we could go into greater detail about the overall collaboration and the specifics of the research um, in the compilation of the different resources we've found. The webinar is not going to be us reading from the handbook or anything like that. We're going to highlight and, um, and pull out the highlights of the chapters in the subsequent webinars, but we did want this format as, a, as another way to connect with you on this content. Um, and then, you know, you can expect from this webinar series that we're not going to cover all there is to know about transportation and streets and commercial districts, but we hope you come away with a greater understanding uh, than before you took the course and learn something about, you know, how we went about this. Uh, to access the webinar series, as I mentioned at the beginning, but if you missed it at the beginning, you can, as, as webinar attendees who were able to register, we did have to cap registration at 500. So if you were one of the first 500 to register, you have a GoToWebinar registration link. You can always access this recording just by going back to that link and signing in. We'll also have a YouTube link up on that homepage, mainstreet.org forward slash navigating main streets. You can always access it that way. We'll post them after they broadcast. So uh, in the next couple of days, you'll see this one up on the website. And as, um, as I mentioned, we'll have this four week course. So every Tuesday, 1 to 2 p.m. Central Time, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So 
So today, November 5th, November 12th, November 19th, um, today, we're really exploring this toolkit, showing you where to find it, giving you kind of the, the overall why, how, what. Uh, next week, we're going to talk a bit more about Chapter 1. Instead of going over everything um, the way we are today, we're really going to pull out some pieces. We'll have some section reviewers talk about a few of the themes from Chapter 1 and how they connect to each other and connect to transportation and streets. Uh, on week three, November 12th, we're going to look at the chapter two, chapter two content through the experiences of community leaders and transportation planners. So, um, again, not going through chapter two step by step, but pulling out some of the highlights and some of the personal experiences of people on the ground. And then um, in the last week, on November 19th, we're going to have a discussion with multiple stakeholders from one community. I'll tease that and I'll leave it as a mystery for now uh, where they are, but multiple stakeholders from one community who took, undertook a collaborative streetscape project and really learned a lot about each other and about the process, uh, process in that. So just to give you an overview there. Um, and future goals for us here, you know, we don't want this to be the end of this work. There's so much to be done in creating people for streets and we want to help facilitate that and be a part of that. So the part of the work as we're building out this toolkit, we've been brainstorming about what the future goals are. You know, both PPS and Main Street America offer technical services on, you know, a bunch of different topic, topics. And we've been building out ideas for different comprehensive technical service pilots, as well as individual services, like what we've listed here around workshops, adapted webinars, one-on-one -on -one coaching, asset mapping assistance, stakeholder engagement, um, plan, plan development, plan implementation, et cetera. So we've been thinking about it. We haven't, you know, set anything in stone because as, as good uh, place-focused economic development professionals do, we want everything to be adaptable. So that's why uh, we have some ideas here. But we're really curious as a part of this, as you're thinking through this, what your ideal services modules would be. Um, this is another point of interactivity, which, again, you can type into the questions box. You can email us separately about it, but we're really curious to hear uh, to hear what your ideal services would be or what your community needs. So keeping that as an open question for you there, and you can you can uh, answer it as we go along too. But I think I've reached the end of my slides, and I can turn it back over to Shaylee. Hello again, everyone. Uh, so now that Lindsay shared some more details. So, um, about the toolkit parts, and after you've heard kind of the story about those, the creation of those parts, um, what's inside, how you can access them, and what tools are all there. Um, I just want to share about another overarching value that this toolkit has had, um, and that's that's about talking together. Now, I definitely mean the value of talking with each other, person to person, but it's also a value that we applied to the pieces of the toolkit and the chapters we created. Uh, so the way that we envisioned the toolkit pieces talking together was that the handbook is like your course book. So it has those more descriptive details, those points of pieces of evidence that clearly outlines all of the course material and all of the pieces, how they might fit together. Then the online resource library is like your more targeted encyclopedia or if you prefer, it's like your transportation toolkit Wikipedia page. It's meant to go beyond the handbook by providing more links that we could cover um, in the handbook, but also more links as we time goes on and we discover more new evidence and research. Um, and then to keep with, it kind of keeps with that course analogy of a place where you can do your further research or get your bonus credit in. <laughs> Then the webinar series is like your actual real-time class discussion. It's meant to provide more conversational language and relatable stories than you can gather from our written text. And it's also meant to spark the interactive discussion that could possibly go beyond uh, the series itself. So all of these pieces talk to each other, support and benefit from each other, and call out to each other for how you might actually use them and build your knowledge. And then the specific cha chapters or comp core components of this toolkit were no different. They are all meant to talk with each other and work together when putting them into action. So for example, 
You might use the content from chapter one about why transportation matters um, to provide the conversation pieces that help you connect with your community in a collaborative process. Like that's, that's what it is described in chapter three. So you can use content from chapter one to uh, use for those conversations. And then as another example of how these sort of chapters talk together is that the how-tos described in chapter three can actually inform how you will uh, confirm the strategies in chapter two that make the most sense for your specific community context. So Lindsay kind of touched on that, but we really wanted all of those chapters to cross-reference each other um, in, the, in the handbook and across the different pieces um, so that, and this is also kind of going to play out in the subsequent webinars where we look closer um, at how they all sort of support each other. So stay tuned. And then all in all, the way that the toolkit pieces and the toolkit chapters talk together is really meant to encourage that actual action of talking together. When it comes down to it, we are all attempt attempting to achieve similar outcomes, even if sometimes we take different personal and professional roads to get there. Oftentimes we just don't realize it because of all of those different uh, professional languages we have learned over time. Um, but this is really why working together to work through, the, through all of the translation barriers uh, to evaluate each other and their, our various expertise and to collaboratively support each other and is so integral to the positive and effective outcomes that really do make our streets as places that put people first. Uh, so here's another point of uh, activity that we'd like to engage you in um, to talk together with you and to spark the opportunity for you to talk to each other as peers as you're viewing these webinars. Um, so we'd like you to share with us kind of the ways your communities are already talking to each other about transportation issues. So this would be one where we'd like you to uh, add some answers into, or into the questions box. And, um, and we're really just kind of asking, are there sort of like specific types of public meetings uh, in your communities? Do you transportation planners meet you in the street? Do you hold conversations with peers over to coffee chat? Uh, does someone in your community already have a popular blog that happens to engage people in conversation? So just let us know some sort of ways that your communities are already, are already speaking to each other about streets and transportation both those simple ways and creative ways. Um, we'd love to hear, and um, if you can't see each other, we'll definitely want to share this in the next, the following webinars and over social media, so stay tuned for that. But we just would love to hear kind of what's already working for your communities and how you talk to together. So I'll give you just a few seconds to kind of type in some of those and think about it. Um, and then, we just are really loving uh, your engagement and your participation in this webinar series um, and hope that it does really spark those conversations um, that you might have online with us and with each other in your community that you might bring this to, to everyone. Um, and we hope that it will also kind of grow out the toolkit in, a, in an impactful way. So before we move on to just like the actual question and answer portion of this webinar, um, I just wanted to basically summarize kind of what's coming in the series. You may have already gathered this from the different repetitions, um, but today you're tuning into the introductory webinar, so thank you so much for joining. Next week we'll dive into uh, that first chapter, answering the why of transportation matters. Um, and that will be Tuesday, November 5th. Again, same time frame. Um, and then the subsequent webinars will also be on Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, and then it will be a and it will be an exciting and rapid series. Uh, it's, we're mod modeling it after this sort of classroom or master class concept. Um, it's kind of to support that classroom like learning and sharing, we would like you all to then, we're gonna send out this uh, one page PDF summary after each webinar, which will request that you complete a very short assessment 
or assignment um, between the webinars that it kind of helps you to engage to to see what you have gained from the webinar previously and prepare you for the webinar to come. So this week the assignment is that we're just asking you what are the top three transportation related assets in your commercial district or community and what are the top three transportation related opportunities. So the top three assets and top three opportunities that you already see uh, related to your streets and transportation in your communities. So yes, again, you'll receive a uh, email follow-up after this webinar. And Julie, so if I could let's... just add um, about the assignment. Uh, so yes, we will be sent, as she said, we'll be sending it out via PDF, and then you can answer it via the Google form that's linked to the PDF. So that, that link that we talked about early on about the AIA credits is also in the Google form that's linked to on the PDF. So all of your answers can be put in on that link um, with the PDF. The other thing about the PDF is that it's also in the handout section on the right hand side of the control panel. We are going to send it out, but we uploaded it to the handouts too in case anybody is chomping at the bit to get at that PDF that's in there. Um, but sorry, Shaylee, just wanted to add that. Nope, and also we'd love to, if you uh, are so inclined and you're really jazzed about the assignment, please feel free to share it on social media and tag both of our organizations. And maybe that will spark some sort of conversation with your own peers already, or maybe build some networks out with the other people who are engaging with this series. So please feel free to do that and tag us so we can know what conversations come out of today's webinar. So, Lindsay, you want to lead uh, the question and answer portion? Absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you for switching it. So, just a quick note on our end, uh, these questions that are coming in are great. I'm seeing a couple just um, kind of housekeeping things. The Google Form link, if we could make that live. I think some folks have already opened the PDF. Uh, overachievers, thanks for checking it out. Um, the uh, yeah, if we can make the Google Form link live, people can start putting in answers to the questions if they'd like to on here. Um, but the other question here, so we're we're here taking kind of overall Q and A, an overall uh, theme. We'd like to know what you'd want to hear from us throughout the webinar. So that is a question on that Google Form as well. It would be great if you could. Uh, I mean, putting it in the question box is great. You could also fill it out on that form, and we'll have it. Um, kind of all in one spot. But that's kind of an overarching one we have for you that you could answer really at any time through that Google form. Um, there are so many great answers to the questions we've asked throughout the webinar on here. I'd love to read all of those, but first I'd like to just hit on some of the actual questions people have had. Um, a little while back, somebody asked if you could repeat the Mentimeter code, because I think some folks still want to access that. Shaylee, if you don't mind. Um, just repeating the menti mentimeter code. Yeah, it's six six three five three nine. So sixty six thirty five thirty nine. Thank you. Um, we've also had some notes throughout the webinar about the audio, and I just wanted to note that we will make sure to uh, to call out the toll-free phone number in addition to instructions on how to do the computer audio. I know for some of the folks who are calling in or tuning in from overseas, there's uh, there's some barriers to that, which as all of those channels are available, but we will make them more obvious how to access those um, so you'll be able to access the next time. Sorry, they weren't more clear in advance of this, but we'll make sure for the next ones that they are. Um, so another person asked about um, linking to the toolkit, if there are any parameters around that, great question. Uh, if you could direct them to our home pages, so for us it's www.mainstreet.org forward slash navigating Main Street. That way folks can download the webinar recordings in the toolkit, but they can also um, you know, see the online resource library all in one spot. So we'd like to track those numbers and track those downloads. So if you could link to that home page, that'd be great. And currently it's on PPS's homepage too. They have a really good, if you go from the hero image on the web page, there's a really good um, 
kind of framing to the toolkit uh, on their website too. So if you would want to share both of those, both TPS's great article about it that also links to the homepage and the homepage, I think that'd be the best way to share it. So great question. Um, another person asked, what is the primary audience for this webinar? Uh, for It's basically the same audience for the toolkit. You know, we're casting the net pretty wide, uh, but I would say specifically we're looking at commercial district, commercial district leaders, transportation professionals, community advocates and stakeholders, and local and state officials. Um, now, that, that's not exhaustive. There are other types of um, professions that I'm probably missing in that net. So, you know, if you aren't fitting that, but you feel like you're a part of it, this is for you too. This introductory webinar is, a, is very much a 101. So the content following up in webinars two, three, and four are a little more of a deep dive. So this was just really to introduce you to the whole idea because it's uh, a little complex and multi-part. Okay, um, if I am interested in personalized technical services for my town, who should I contact to learn more? We'll put our contact uh, on at the end of the presentation, but you contact me or Shaylee or Laura directly about that and we can talk to you about it and get you connected and all of that. Um, great question. Another one, will the same webinar link be live for the other three sessions? Yes, when you registered, you should have, um, like the registration should sign you up for all four. What I would do in the meantime is just double check your registration. What, you know, because when you do the registration through GoToWebinar, you can add it to your calendar. Um, and so you should try that and see if it's connected to all, all four of the dates. But it should be one registration link for all four. Similarly, it should get you access to all recorded webinars. But again, we'll have all those recordings uh, posted via a YouTube link as well. Okay. Um, Shaylee or Laura, I mean, I know I've kind of rapid fired answered some of those. Is there anything that you'd like to add to any of the questions that we've had so far? Uh, no, you covered it pretty well. Okay. Those answers. Great. Um, somebody asked, what is the context of Main Street? What is the size of the neighborhood or district that identifies that Main Street or defined commercial district, please? Yeah, so um, commercial districts, we're talking mostly about, like in the context of Main Street America's work, we work in a lot of rural downtowns and commercial districts, neighborhood commercial districts in big cities. So for a rural downtown, you're thinking about the primary thoroughfare where a lot of the retail, restaurants, bars, that kind of thing, uh, where a lot of the commercial businesses are located. Uh, but you could think about it in a big city as well, you know, a commercial district like in Chicago, the Magnificent Mile is a you know, prime example of a retail corridor. Um, there are other places like that in, in neighborhoods that each have kind of their main thoroughfare for commercial, uh, commercial activity. So hopefully that kind of gets at what you're asking about. Um, so in the context of this toolkit, even though we're talking about streets as places everywhere and anywhere, uh, we do angle toward talking about creating great places in commercial districts, so that downtown or that neighborhood, um, the primary neighborhood corridor. Okay, keep them coming guys. I'm looking back through to see if I missed any. Um, these are great. And your answers have been so helpful. Oops. Sorry about the slides there. Got a little over animated on the question box. <laughs> My bad. Um, all right, so access minty code. Okay. Okay, a couple more here. Um, will you be providing sections through the successful examples? I'm not totally sure what you're asking here, but I think um, we we will have some case studies and some best practice, practice examples for sure. Uh, and then we also, of course, list those in the toolkit. So great question. Um, and uh, will you be talking about densities and what are the healthy ratios of residential to commercial? Um, we got a little bit into some of that, but not as much into some of the other topics. So that's a great question um, that we can take into consideration for the next couple of weeks to see if there are points that we could hit on with those. Um, okay. 
Um, Shaylee or Laura, any any additional points you wanted to add to any of those? Uh, in terms of like case studies and best practices, I'd also just like want to reiterate that our online resource library is a live sort of website. So if if you have your own sort of case studies that things that really worked in your own towns and communities, uh, please feel free to like send us the links to those stories or or some best practices that you've heard of um, working in towns around you. So. And that, that would be emailing Main Street at Saving Places that are correct? Yes, yep, yep, that'll be great. Great, no, great point, great point. Um, somebody asked a really good question. Will, in the case studies, will there be examples of implementation or is it mostly planning? There will be examples of implementation uh, in all of the case studies, so in the toolkit, we have some case studies listed out and, and, um, and linked in the online, online resource library. So most of those, I think all of them are start to finish. So including stakeholder engagement, including planning, and including implementation. We'll have some folks who actually lived it uh, talk about it in the subsequent webinars. So yeah, we'll have some examples on that, but that's a great question. Um, that was a, a primary goal of ours to make sure we, we took it through the through line so you could see some, some best practices out there. Um, and thank you for the, the person who asked the original question when she asked about the sections she meant, dimensional information for sidewalks, storefronts, climate appropriate design. Yes, to a certain extent we do cover some of those. Those are great. Thanks for clarifying. Um, we do cover some of those and we also uh, point to other resources that cover those in more detail. So, um, so you'll see some of the links to those as well. And then, of course, if anything pops up that you're looking for more resources on, we could connect you directly to some of the stuff that we've seen and researched. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're getting toward the end. So I just, um, just wanted to go back quickly to this assignment. Again, we will send out the uh, PDF in an email and uh, that will have the Google form where you can answer the question, the simple assignment questions we have where you can fill in your AIA information and answer the question about what you'd like to see from us on these webinars. Um, I'm putting our contact information up here to for the last minute or so so that you can see who you can contact directly. You can also email Main Street at savingplaces.org, especially if you're sending in resources for the online resource library, that's one of your best best options for contact. But we are going to be on each of these webinars. We'll have obviously other presenters and that sort of thing. But the three of us that you see here listed as contacts, um, you can feel free to reach out to us directly with questions um, or further comments. Uh, in the last you know, 30 seconds or so, Shaylee or Laura, do you have anything to add or anything you wanted to, to mention before we sign off? Just a big thank you to the team who helped put this together and all the participants on the webinar. Yes, thank yes, you so much. Yes, thank you, everybody. And one last thank you, of course, again to Antti and Robert and Bass. Without their support, this wouldn't we wouldn't be here and this wouldn't have happened. So uh, thanks to them as well. And thank you, Shaylee and Laura, for being great team members. I've super enjoyed pulling all this together. So looking forward to the next few weeks, and we'll see you guys next time. Okay, thanks guys, bye. Are you guys still on the line in the, have the participants?